Hi everyone and welcome. Happy Thursday here. Yes, today I have my guests with me at the same time, which is quite refreshing for my audience without any audio. So yes, welcome to another show of the Get Naked Talk with Dr. Aura. And today I have a very close friend and what I call a superstar in my book, uh, Mr. Jeffrey Cobelli. So welcome to the Get Naked Talk. Hello. I'm at superstar status. In your book? Superstar status. Yes. Where, where is this book? Did you show me the list of all the superstars? I have to see who else <laughs> is with me in the superstar status. <laughs> you are. Hey, it's my book. It's my show. I get to call you whatever I want. And I love you for those people that know, yes, you. I feel you're a superstar because you change lives with all you do. So that's superstar status for me. Can I tell you what's really enjoyable? So I've watched you've been doing these. And... <laughs> I'm, you know, I got to watch more of them because I don't know what your, it's so interesting to watch you because I don't know what your goal is. I think you just like want to talk about stuff and which is great. I mean, that's what I love to do too. But what I wanted to say, what's so enjoyable is to watch how happy you get when you do these. Like, I don't cool. know what this does for you, but you are like, you shine so bright when you're doing these. And I just think that's really cool. So I love that you're living your passion like that. I do love doing this and, and you know me for many, many years. So, you know, I've always been a little scattered and I just love to show my passion. I, I was talking just recently. I was like, I enjoy this so much. I should get paid for it because I love interviewing people. So I'm so glad you were able to catch that. Uh, I do. And I love to just, uh, I feel that every time I lift somebody up and I'm, they're invited to my show and I let them shine. I shine too. We all lift each other up in order to bless others with our message and our passion and our gifts. So uh, I love doing it. I really, really, really do. And it's been something that I haven't stopped. Um, and people seem to enjoy it too. I never have a format. As people know, this is unscripted. As I know, because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are we going to talk about? You're like, whatever. But I think, you know, as like, as scary as this is, because I, I think even probably you, even as excited as you are doing these, you probably get a little nervous because you don't know what to expect, but you put yourself out there. I think that's something that's really important now, just from, you know, I teach in, um, in schools with kids and, you know, I teach film, but I feel like I'm always teaching them about life. Um, and it's disguised as a film class. And I say that that you that it's great that you're doing what you're doing and i think it's an important as an example forget of what you say but i think it's important as an example because what i'm seeing right now especially with teenagers is that they are afraid to use their voice which mm -hmm. i did not expect like um they're afraid to sp i don't want to say speak their truth because that's just that's like one of those cliches that i just uh, i'm not a fan of but um I, you know like kids are a f are, are really fearful right now and I think of everything and, you know, I don't not that I want to get, get into bashing social media because it's just a tool like we're using this for good. Some of the kids use it for bad, but there's something that's crippling kids right now. And I don't know if it's it might just be purpose. You know, it just you know, it's like a, a hammer with no nail and they and they just don't feel like they have a purpose. And I think that's very scary right now. I love that you're talking about this. Obviously, I have to change kids that you have met and I've been very lucky and blessed with them but I see it especially in my daughter I think I should have Facebook so she won't hear this but I, I she cares she she doesn't post anything so she's not she's on the media but she's just watching other people's lives but every time she's going to make a statement or do something she's fearful about what other people might think even though she doesn't post anything she doesn't even take a selfie for this matter and, um, but she's constantly this comparison and this, this fear of stepping out. So they're, they're so used to living in this middle where it's nonchalant. We don't care enough to make mm -hmm. a stand either way, mm -hmm. which is scary, right? Yeah. They, they're like comfortable in this middle because it's this safe zone. And we both know that in the safe zone, nothing happens, right? We don't grow. We don't do nothing. And we don't definitely will never find our purpose and our true mission if we stay in the safe zone forever. And this is happening so much. And obviously so close to me. And I'm being naked by talking about this because this is my kids are my everything. Mm -hmm. And this is my daughter who's gonna be 18. She's a great school kid, but she's shy and she lives in this bubble 
that is for safety. And even to make a simple choice, like what she's going to wear or if she should go to a place is, is, is a big deal because they just don't know. Mm -hmm. And they're letting all this outside input of other people that are pretending and wearing their masks on social media, because we could talk about that another sub, another episode, but and without living their own lives because they're so fearful too, because they just don't know if they will, you know, they, they're afraid. They're afraid to make a statement. They're afraid to make a difference. They, they're just afraid to step out there to even find out who they are. You know, the, the risk seems greater than the reward for them yeah. right now. Uh, so, you know, like what's very popular right now with children is, you know, like it started years ago with like these YouTube videos going around where people would like walk up to other people and punch them in the face and everybody thought that was funny. I think they were called like knockout videos. Yeah. So it's always, but then it, it just carried on to a new thing and it's, it's really about catching somebody doing something stupid and then pointing and making fun of that person. So I actually, I actually understand the fear, um, but it's, that's why it's so much more important for them to get over that. Because that's the thing, as you know, and as I know, that's going to be the thing for them in their 20s they're going to be really struggling with. Because now they're going to have to apply it to a real world, real practice. you got to pay the bills and all that stuff. And then they're going to go inward and say, oh. And they're going to think about time. And they're, then they're going to talk about trauma. Like me and you have been through this. you know. Yeah. Like me and you have also been in our comfort zone. Yeah. Like me and you have also cared a lot about what other people think. But mm -hmm. I think what you and I realized is that did not serve us. That did not get us to where we wanted to go. And the risk of getting out of our comfort zone, we saw as less than, I guess, the risk of not reaching our full potential. And that's why you and I, people like you and I, who were in the dumps and whatever it was, depressed, lonely, um, playing the victim, saying, why me? Mm -hmm. You know, it's such a big thing. When you hear somebody start out with questions like with the word why, a lot of the times I, I just, you know, I'm, so I don't know what you want to talk about. Sorry, I'm going to go because I can go into rants in different ways. I don't know <laughs> what you want to do. But I think that's important just for people to catch, like, the words but that I, they say. Before we change the subject, yeah. I think it's so important that you tell me you are working with kids. Okay, so I want to do a whole Get Naked series just for teenagers because I find that it's so important for them to find their, their you know, their true self, for them to tap into their passion, their purpose, and to regain the self-love that is going to give them the security to get out there. I, I am working on that. But I want to know from you, you've been working with these kids, what do you think is this thing that they're missing, or what do you think they, the, helps them to regain that confidence, to remove the fear and step into at least learning about themselves? Mm -hmm. So it's different for everybody. Right. Yeah. But I would say one of the main things that comes through, because I was just doing I just did a, <laughs> It was so scary out. Of, I did a presentation at uh, this middle school. It was in front of um, sixth, seventh and eighth graders. There was a thousand of them. And I had to talk for an hour and a half. Um, the thing that they. That's, so a that, when, That's a tough crowd. Yeah, it's actually it's much tougher than doing stand up in front of yeah. uh, 40 people. I, but, um, you know, <laughs> The thing that I can tell you that they relate to, so, you know, I'm a big storyteller. It's what I do for a living, whether it's in videos or anything else that I do, I apply a story to everything. Cause I think that's so important. Like people want to know where you come from. So when people, and especially kids look at my life now and they see, I have to them, they see, I have a thousand Instagram followers and like a hundred YouTube subscribers. They think I'm famous. Um, so they idolize me so that w a couple of things that I see is they idolize different people than we did. Um, like I used to idolize, Actually, I used to idolize a lot of girl bands, like musically. So, like, No Doubt, TLC, like those are my idols. They they don't care about th their idols are YouTubers. Um, so they're watching other people do something for themselves, but they'd rather watch than do. And I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but that's what's happening. But it's back to that crippling thing where they're afraid to do something, or they feel like they're not worthy of that thing that they want. So I think the thing that I communicate that. You know, because I'm always adapting every talk I do. I'm changing a little bit. But this sentence where I tell them your struggle is your gift. The mm -hmm. struggle is not the thing that's going to keep you back. The struggle is the thing that's going to set you up. And when they start hearing stuff like that, because I talk about, you know, you, you met me. So we've known each other for 11 years, almost on the dot. Yeah. Um, 
when you met me, I weighed 240 pounds. Now I weigh 180, right? So I show those kids my before and after picture because I think people look at me and they see, you know, whether it's the car I drive, how I look, um, what I have going for me right now, and they think that I'm lucky. Um, but so that's why I need to tell people where I was 10 years ago, because if you saw where I was 10 years, even me, when I look at the things that I have now, and I'm not talking about just material things, because I haven't told you yet, Alda, you, do you know I'm engaged? <laughs> wow, <laughs> so, I didn't know. I've that's been engaged crazy. for a couple of months, but so even having that, like when I, when I um, 10 years ago, I was going through like a troubled relationship. Never did I think in 10 years, you know, I thought like, how am I going to have a house, kids, a wife? Like I just, you know, you start thinking about all that stuff. And then as you're just going through like whatever journey you're on, uh, in, in movies, we call it the hero's journey. Like the hero's always on a journey. And it's those, it's those antagonists that are meant to try to give them obstacles so that they, be, that they can become greater. Like Batman doesn't become Batman without Joker. Batman doesn't exist without Joker. So he actually, he needs that antagonist. He needs that thing to make him feel like a failure, to, to make him readjust his ways to be, ultimately become better. Um, so that's, it just, for me, even though, it's, what is that phrase? Like, it took me 10 years to become an overnight success. I feel that way a lot in life. Like, if you saw me day to day, that may not look like progress, but then all of a sudden, it doesn't, it's not even all of a sudden, it just feels that way. Everything starts falling into place and you're like, oh my God, look where I am now. Like I have all the things that I want now. 10 years ago, I had nothing that I wanted. So I don't know, you know, that's all I try to communicate with people. It's just like, it is possible. I know what it feels like to feel like you don't have connections or the money or the resources or the friends or the family or the love of your life or the, the body that you want. Like I just, I know all those feelings. Um, so it's just this idea that the struggle is the gift because that struggle made me a better person. And that's what I want to communicate to other people. I love it. And I think that's a great message because we all struggle with things. Hey, we again, we know each other for a while. We have all had our struggles. And yeah, and I'm, I'm a different place than I was 10 years ago by, by many miles, right? But I love that the struggle is your gift. It's just like the challenge is your sauce. I, I tell my, my clients, the challenge is the sauce, okay? That is the sauce that is going to make it all taste better and then just keep figuring out what is your best recipe. It is the challenge. It is through the challenge we find that recipe. So, uh, it's, which is the same thing, right? We're both saying the same thing. And, and it's embracing, just like, you know, embracing that part of yourself because there will always be challenge. Even at this point that you are in your life, that everything is going how you, how you, Never expected it, right? Never and expected. It this. is how you expected it recently. Trust me, you have been working day by day to get to where you are now. Same with me, same with everybody that is on this journey. There were always going to be different challenges. Depending on the level you are, then the challenge will be greater. And so on and so on. So it's never going to stop being there. So fearing the challenge or not embracing it or not making it part of your living sauce so you can find your best recipe is is the biggest fear right it's the biggest mistake that's where we go wrong because the challenge would always be there it's like i tell my can make it clients it's not like you're gonna stop having stress it's not like you're gonna stop having challenges in your life that's that's silly i don't know who, who put that out there it's not about that it's not about you keep tuning your your instruments so you are able to deal with the stress and the challenges better and you learn from them faster instead of having to drop to the very bottom and get up again, which I know I've been guilty of doing. So, um, so yeah, I, I love that, and I, I wanted to touch base on that because teaching kids is is where is one of my passions. I feel they're the future. You know, even in my chiropractic practice, when I see kids, it's like I want to pour it all there. Is that you know, I I see older people too, and I love them too, but I almost feel just like with my parents that they're not gonna change. You know, that's it. It is it is how it's going to get, and that's it. But with the young people, I pour myself more because I feel they are the future of my children, right? Mm -hmm. They are the next president. Who knows? We're not going to talk about politics. Or, just, but, or, 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 you know, not, you know, and I try to, like, you know, when I talk to kids, you know, it's this idea of, like, what, what is great? 
because <clears throat> you know again back to like the subscribers which which they call sub count like what's your sub count bro like that's what i get asked by eighth graders um so i tell them like who cares about how many subscribers you have because i i talk about i have a hundred youtube subscribers i go mm -hmm. that that doesn't mean anything to me what means something to me is that my fiance now knows that i love her and i'm there for her and her ter her two kids know that I'm always going to be there for them. That's what's really important. Everything else is really, it's, it's nice, it's bonus. But what I'm saying is you don't have to be the next president. You could just be a great dad. Yeah. You could just be a great mom. You could just be a role model for somebody else. You could make somebody smile today, you know, just because you actually gave them attention. You know, like cash, you know, I think about this all the time with cashiers, like every cashier you go to, I mean, they're making 10, 12, 12 dollars an hour. Trust me, they don't like their job, most likely don't like their life. They're not giving you the attitude. <laughs> you know, like if they're not pleasant with you, it's nothing against you. It's their life that they're bringing in. But, you know, I'm sure you do this, too, where you just start talking to somebody, maybe ask them some questions and you see them sort of lighten up and open up and they become a different person. And then you realize, oh, they're not really a bad person. It's just they feel like nobody's giving them attention. Like nobody's asking them, how, how are they feeling? How are they doing? Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was a longer point. But, you know, it's, so it's just. Mean, yeah. and it, it's true. It's not about being president. It's about being, being, you know, being loving their life. I feel like just like you mentioned now, the, the store clerk or whatever. And there's some people that love doing it. But when you love your life, you're just going to be happier person. You're going to be happier to others. You're going to be able to bless others with your talents or, or your gifts or just be a happy human. Jeez, don't we need more happy humans? I always remember the guy in the DR, remember? We go, um, uh, Adriano. Uh -huh. Yeah, that he was always just so happy and he was like cripple, no, no house, everything. But he was just a happy, beaming light. So how many people did he bless just by being happy, being light in the conditions that, because he gave perspective to so many of us, right? Mm -hmm. Every single time that we would see him and he would come and greet the group. And, and, and he was just this beaming light considering the situation he was in. He gave us all perspective. It was all like a smack in the face and reality check. Hey, baby, there's no reason you should be complaining or you should be up in your stuff when you are so blessed when somebody... That has nothing. It's showing you pure happiness, at least for the moment. So, Ada, for you, how do you get, you know, <clears throat> every you're you're obviously a business owner, um, you know, doing multiple things. So, like when you wake up, I guess you know what what is like your what is your motivation, and how do you? I don't know if you need to get inspired to do what you do, but but like, what's your daily? I mean, I guess it's motivation, but like what's just daily, what, what gets you doing this every day and being the type of person that you are? That is very simple for me. I keep it simple because this is the only way I'm going to keep with it. But I, for the last, I would say, hmm, I would say like 15 years, I keep a journal. And for me is, uh, I, I, I used to call it my grateful journal. I was like every day you write in this every day, every wow. day, I have books and books and Sometimes I miss a couple of days depending on how sad my life was. So I just, I just moved recently. So I went through some of those journals and some of those journals are like, oh my Lord. I was going to say, that has to be amazing to go back and, and read those. It, it, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's the same thing over and over and you feel the pain or the struggle, <laughs> whatever it is. It's kind of scary, but I do it. Uh, for me, that is super important that I do every morning. Is my grateful journal. I read a devotional. Uh, it's very important for me to center myself to a higher power than it's not me. Because, hey, guys, I don't have all the answers. Um, I'm learning every day. Um, I'm super humble to be put in the position where I'm at. But this only came through struggle. <laughs> I've gone through a lot of struggle. But what keeps me centered, for sure, is that grateful journal, my devotional, and reading why I do this. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I do this is because I, deep, deep down inside, I guess I want to feel that I'm making a difference in other people's lives. That That's really it. I want to spark light in others because, again, just like giving is selfish, right? Serving is, can be selfish. 
I want to I want to make sure constantly every day that I made a difference. I just it's it's my thing whether it is being a mom, whether it is being a chiropractor, being a get naked life coach, speaking on a stage, car mission, doing a mission trip, whatever it is that I do, I want to make sure that I'm making a difference in somebody else's life. To me, I guess the biggest fear is that I'm just occupying space. Mm. That's my fear. And I'm a fear-driven personality type, just so you know. <laughs> so, so what does that mean? So when you say you're driven by fear, like, so, like, are, are you fearful fear. that you won't help somebody today? No, the Enneagram, my Enneagram is seven. I'm an adventurer, but it is a fear-driven personality type. If we get into that, that's a whole different I don't know. Any, I'm asking because I don't know anything about that. Oh, yeah. So that means my drive is the fear uh, of, yeah, uh, my biggest uh, drive is not, um, is not control, is not pain, is the fear of not making a difference, the fear of not living fully, the fear of, uh, of you know, living something undone. So that's how, that's what takes me to do a lot of my crazy things. So that is my drive. So obviously there is healthy and unhealthy parts of that fear. Like with everything, there is a side to everything. But what keeps me in the middle is just uh, what I found that is my healthiest is just making sure that I'm doing something positive for others or myself. I am in that equation too. So every day, even if it's just, let's say I had a cold, a really bad cold, Monday and Tuesday, I was horrible. And yesterday, actually, I had somebody that was going to come video me at home for a video I'm doing for a company. I thought about you. I couldn't, I had to cancel it because I had to take the day kind of for me because I couldn't barely talk, right? So I didn't do much significance yesterday. Well, I interview our friend JC and his girlfriend and the audio was horrible, but I feel like I didn't do much for all the other things that I have planned in my perfect calendar that I had to do to keep moving and help others. I did, did it, but it was okay. And as long as you're okay with that, because that was feeding me, and the healthier I am, I preach self-love in the naked, obviously. Uh, you cannot give what you do not own, right? You cannot, a naked man cannot lend his shirt. He doesn't have one. So that is very, very important in everything that I teach is that you do you first. <laughs> so, yeah. No, it's a huge point, like, you know, because I think sometimes <laughs> people feel like they're being selfish um, mm -hmm. when they think about themselves. But I can relate to that, too, because, I mean, like you just said, like when, you know, when we first met, I always so I felt like what you were saying, but I was doing that all the time. I was if everything was about doing things for others. And where did that leave me? You know, it was unhealthy, unhappy, all that stuff. Um, so it wasn't until I started taking care of myself that I could I, I could really help others. That you is know? so. That, that was actually a big thing in terms of you know I used to have like a, a negative mindset in terms of money, uh, basically because I read the Bible wrong, you know, and it said like the only blessed are the meek, which is not really it's paraphrased. It's not really the full story. Like God didn't want you to be poor. <laughs> Maybe he wants you to be humble, but not poor. Um, but I realized that, you know what, I wanted to I wanted to accumulate money and wealth, not just for me, but because I wanted to be able to have the time freedom and the financial freedom to really serve other people. Um, and that was that was like a definitely like a huge shift for me. I don't need to answer that. Good. Um, and I think, you know, I'm sure you help people with this all the time because, you know, I was thinking about when you were talking about you read back in your journals. I'm sure sometimes you go like, oh, wow, that, those are some dark days. But then I'm sure you look back at that and you'd be like, you were worried about something that didn't even happen. Yeah. You know, so so much of this idea of stress, which, you know, is is just sometimes how you look at the thing. Mm -hmm. So for me, money was this neutral thing. And for years, I looked at it negatively and I didn't have any. And then when I had a positive view on it, I realized I get more, but not not because I was just like hoarding it. Like there's there's things that I'm that I'm doing with it um, that's beneficial. So I, and that just happened from a perception shift. I'm still the same person it's doing the same things. Yeah, yeah. It's about it's how we change the glasses to view that our reality. Because probably, you know, I am the same girl that I was 10 years ago. And, it's, you know, I found some journals that were like, I want to burn. But, um, you know, I was like, ah. 
But it's the same. I'm the same girl. I just, and probably I'm faced with the same stresses. Yes. I am faced with the same stresses. So Definitely. I do it differently. I let things affect me in a different way because I changed my view, my perspective, my, my beliefs, my core beliefs, and my values. Everything has shifted around it, but it, I'm supposed to the same things. I just react differently. I no longer blame others for whatever is happening. I have worked on myself this much that now it's like I see the blessing even when somebody screws me over, you know? I'm like, oh, thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. I just learned that. Wow. God bless you, you know? And people, my friends are like, you're so stupid. Why would you do that? I'm like, no, because it's truly, I see it that much faster. Like, that somebody screwed me over because I needed to learn something or tap into something that I'm doing. And it's a mirror image. And I just got better because of it. So of course I have to give them thank you. So that grateful journal sometimes is saying thank you, even for the bad things in my life, because they're constantly teaching me, shaping me, building me, and just uh, fine tuning my muscle of dealing with the stress that is never going to stop coming. Yeah. And sometimes it's important, like I'm sure when you're talking to people, it, it's, some, it's like it. sometimes it just takes a couple of words and it's the way that you say it. So like, you know, I can tell you, I won't say who or what, I won't give you specifics, but somebody was telling me a story and they had signed this contract and this was, this was going back years ago. And the, the, the contract, they, they got screwed in this contract, but they signed it. And they said the reason why they signed this contract seven years ago is because the person was harassing them about it. And so now they're talking about renegotiating that contract. And again, the other side is putting forth things that is not ultimately going to serve the other person. So this person said to me, I'm just going to sign this contract because they keep on harassing me. And I said, that's what you did last time. So you're not going to do this this time. And it was just like, it was almost like somebody else needed to tell them that they had permission to try a little harder or to fight more or to realize, okay, I'm going to respect my own value and I can't just give this away. And I didn't, you know, I didn't bring them a personal growth book. We didn't talk for a long time. It was a short conversation and the words, not this time, those were the three words they needed to hear. Cause I know that guy, and I'm not saying I did that. It was just listening to the person and understanding what they needed to hear. And the same thing with kids, like they need permission. As much as like, you know, people complain about how kids are, um, they also need permission, like to think that they are worthy, that they are of value. That was the worst thing. When I was a teenager, that was the worst thing I ever felt when somebody basically told me no or that I could not do something. That was the worst feeling I think I could, I could ever have. But like you said, I'm so glad that that happened then because that'll never happen to me now. It is so true. And everything we feel is a setback. It's usually, uh, if we are open our eyes wide enough, we can see how that is blessing us right now. So there's always, I mean, and, and I'm not saying, uh, just for the viewers, I'm not saying that, you know, let somebody screw you over. Don't stand up for your values. Don't stand up for yourself. Please do. Stand up for yourself. Stand up for what's right for you. And, and, and be a voice. Do not just stay quiet. So this is not about... Taking abuse, obviously, I've been an abuse receiver. It's not, I'm not blaming the abuser. I allowed it in my life, and that was my fault, okay? Because mm -hmm. we need to stand up for what we believe. We need to know our values first and then live according to them. And if that means getting your voice louder and, hey, sometimes being firm, that is more power to you. Staying quiet and staying nice is not the answer all the time because my friends criticize me because like you're too nice you forgive too easily you? i forgive for me, people i forgive for me you know people say that you're too nice yeah can you believe that <laughs> <laughs> so how do you so i have another question for you when you when you tell when you ask somebody you know what are your values mm -hmm. how do you help them discover because i think people have a mis they misinterpret what their values are yeah. Right. So how do you help them discover what their real, not what they think their values are, what actually they value? It's through a series of questions. And I, I use the Martini method and I've altered some of that method to my, because it's just too much for me. But I think it's just asking questions gives you the real answer. It's not what you think they are. That I will tell you. Mm -hmm. Most people's values, real values that you're living right now, according to them, 
is not what you think they are. And that's the first lie we have to remove. A lot of people say, oh, no, my value is family, money, God. And I'm like, okay, all right. So tell me, where in your life are you dedicating yourself to God, your family, and money every day? And that gives us the real answer. Oh, no, it's just I don't have time because of this. Or some people say, oh, my first value is physical fitness. I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's what you're doing for physical fitness. It is. I just don't have the time to go work out and, you know, go shopping and food. So people are living to this fake values, mm -hmm. the fake belief of what it is. And then they build their stories around them and the excuses and the and all to cover up not seeing the truth, not and then, seeing And then truth. years go by, right? And years go by. Hey, I'm guilty. <laughs> I remember the first time I did that value exercise. It was like 10 years ago. And I thought my values were totally different to what came out. I realized my values was like watching TV, mm -hmm. watching Oprah, reading U.S. Magazine, I mean, I, when I realized how much time and energy I was spending on that, but then I really wanted something else, I was living a total lie. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a hard truth. And usually they are hard truths because we don't want to see it. It's so much easier to distract ourselves with a thousand other things than to take the time to look within and find our true values or find out if we're actually living according to our values. So many people come to me and when we do the whole get naked uh, one day experience, we do this whole values because I want them to see all their lies before we can build, then remove and then before we can build upon something new. We cannot build on a dirty floor. We need to clean the foundation first. So, but most people are like, yeah, you know, I value, I want to, I've been having this goal forever. I want to lose 10 pounds, for example. You know, it's very common with women. I want to lose 10 pounds, but... You know, and I value physical fitness, but they don't realize that they value more hanging out with their girlfriends and having wine and chips on Thursday nights. They value that more, and it's okay. This is what I want to say. It's okay, but don't say you want one thing and do something totally different. And I've been guilty of this. I can only teach what I've done. That's <laughs> probably I do to get naked because I'm constantly wanting to get naked with myself. This is that work that you do every day, every second, every decision, every thought. You have to do the cleanup. Is this true for me? Is it not? And then you move on from there. Because we, the biggest thing is that we're, we're lying. We're lying to ourselves constantly. And you cannot build upon a lie. Or you could, but it's going to crumble anyways. So... So that's, that's, that's the basic, the value is so, so important that we find out. And the biggest tip that I can tell the audience and how to find out your true values, write down everything you, you do in one day or what you think or where you put your energy. It's where your energy goes, that's where your value's at. Yeah, how much, it's, it's what you actually spend time doing. Yeah. We always make time for the things we value. We make excuses for everything else. I am guilty of it too, Jeffrey. You know I'm in this with you. I'm in this with you. <laughs> I am no guru. I'm no, no, nothing special. I am just a girl on a journey, and I decided to share my journey. That's it. I'm writing a book. I started writing a book, and I, I'm, I'm actually very fearful that it's going to tell the truth. Well, I was going to ask you. You said you do things because, like, it's almost like a fear of missing out mentality. So, mm -hmm. does fear? Oh. Does fear ever stop you from doing anything? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, fear is, is, is either pushes me and stops me. It is both ways. There is this is yin and yang, right? I no, I want to know like the the, the 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 like the scientific psychology behind that because your brain transfers. It says, okay, I'm fear one way, but like f this, I'm gonna do it. But then also fear. Yeah. I don't because I just don't have. I don't. You know, I don't, I can't relate to fear. I don't know. Yeah, that's my driver. So I do things because I fear them. Like I hate working out. So I do it because I fear. I hated running. I did the half marathon because I, I hated it because I fear. So I like to conquer my fears by doing and getting really uncomfortable. And then you're no longer uncomfortable when you do them. But sometimes I am fearful and the fear stops me. 
writing my book and writing my get naked story and going through my past and going into deep into relationships and everything that I have gone through, I'm fearful because that means my friends, my children, my everybody is going to know some ugly, ugly truths yeah. that probably should not be public, <laughs> but probably should not be public. You know, even my boyfriend, he's like, are you sure about this? Your mom, you're going to kill her probably. And you know what? It helps you. You wouldn't, you'd be surprised. Like, like, so we were just talking about the, the balance of it. There's going to be just as much blowback from your book as there is growth yeah. and positivity. Um, I, I just think it's important. Like wh what value is it? You know, this is how I, I would ask myself in this situation where you're in, what is the value in keeping it inside? And for me, like thinking about when I go out there and, you know, I've been talking about um, my brother more recently, my, my basically like missing brother who I haven't seen now in seven years. I did not talk about that for like the first three or four years he was missing because I was worried about how my family would interpret it because they're, you know, actively um, and presently going through it and coping in their own way. So it's like, oh, my God, if I start talking about this, is that going to But you know what? It's like that's <laughs> that's that's not my problem. Like that's actually other, if, if there's an issue with talking about something that's going on in, I mean, listen, there's some things that go on in your family. You don't need to talk about, like it, it can be kept in house, but this, I know that there's people just living in pain. I know there's other people like me who have, you know, when it comes to mental illness, they're, they're ashamed of talking about the, like someone close in their family. Cause it's like, oh, this is a stain on the family and every, you know, this is personal. And I get that, but there's also a lot of other people who are doing that. So this affects so many people like it's huge for me to talk about or, you know, what's happening now is there's an awareness of mental illness. Like it's definitely happened. Bipolar and schizophrenia, people are talking about as a disease. That's great. But nobody's talking about, you know, I come from a family of five. So there's four other people who are negatively impacted by this this situation. So it's like, well, what about them? And I just know that if that's just one family, there's many other families out there like that. And somebody and if it has to be me just to get somebody else talking about it, then I'll do it. And that's the value. So there's no that's why I asked you that, because for me at this point, I've recognized in my life, there's no value in me holding in talking about my brother. There's no value in that. So why am I going to choose that? That's my personal choice. Obviously, and, and what you're saying is that it's always asking the right, the, the right questions that is going to lead us to the answer because the answer is always within. And yes, how is not doing it serving you or serving others, right? How is keeping it quiet going to help others or help yourself, right? And if you can ask yourself that and say, but you know what, for me, there's it's it's total value to keep that inside, then I say do that. <laughs> Like it's been for a while. Obviously, my kids are a certain age that I feel I could, you know, I don't shy away from telling them the kind of life I've had and, and the experiences and how naked I've been. I've been so naked with them, probably they're tired of hearing it. They're like, ah, please, mom, just, you know. Um, so I think for me, they are the biggest, my biggest fans and my biggest drivers, right? So I might turn everybody off. With the book you know they might be like oh my god we thought she was holy or whatever you know i don't know that we, we thought she was somebody totally different or people have their own ideas you know mm -hmm. people are gonna think whatever they want to think anyhow but this is yeah by letting your truth and i'm sure some people are going to be moved by it and they're going to be able to step out of something like that be able to rise above when you thought there was no hope and and, and that's it. those are the people you do it for, right? Not the hundred that I might get turned off and they might be like, this girl's really naked. I don't want to deal with her, which is fine because I'm not here to please anybody. I know for a fact that when I express my passion, just like you mentioned, and I do these interviews and I do my seminars and my mission trips and everything else that I'm passionate about, some people are going to be blessed, some are going to be turned off. And that is okay with me. Yeah. Because I no longer need that approval in order to love me. I probably need my kids' approval still. But, you know, I am still working on that. It's going to come a time where probably their approval is not going to matter. But, you know, I know that I'm never going to please my mother. Hey, mom, I love you if you listen to this. But uh, I'm never going to please her. And that's okay, too. I've, I've come to terms with that. 
But yes, I'm a little scared about it. Very scared. I don't even know. Because the more I start, I started writing it. And the more I start seeing it, I'm like, <laughs> that's, that's not okay. Maybe I should have mentioned that. So, uh, and I'm like, so I would say when you're like editing that book and you're looking yeah. back and like those big emotional triggers that you get and you go, oh, this is too close. I should take that out. That's exactly the thing you need to leave in. That's what somebody told me. Is that if that makes you want to burp, that probably is the thing that you need to sleep in. Yeah, that's the that's where the juice is. Nobody yeah, wants to like, just. And I'm like, do I really? Do I really? You know, uh, am I really, really, really? But that's my brand. You know, my brand is naked. You know, so if I cannot be super naked with myself and just tell my story, and then what the heck am I doing? That's interesting but, that it gives you like self accountability while you're trying to help others. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so so yeah, so if I'm gonna do anything, and you know, I've been this can make a brand has been up and down, and and, and it was like I got to a point that I almost like just kaput it. But I, I, I'm passionate about it. I, I would say it's my dream project that I'm going to keep moving forward with it, and I'm so happy you've been part of it. I still post your video that you made me five years ago. No, That's five years <laughs> already, Jeez. four years ago, June 2015. Four years ago. It's time for a new one. Can I afford you? No. <laughs> no, keep on doing this because some of the reason why uh, like something like a get naked pops up is also it's in reaction to what's going on in the world. And right now people are so sensitive. Like it's so hard just to talk to people about stuff. Like forget about having an opinion or just uh, just not even allowing somebody to have an opinion and not get mad at them. Like, we're just humans. Like, we express ourselves. We talk about things. We, we misspeak. Uh, we misthink sometimes. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, there's so many people who just, who have this negative reaction on just an opinion. And when that happens so much, people feel like they can't speak. So that's why it's important for things like Get Naked, because you give people an outlet to talk about things, not in a safe space, meaning like don't offend anybody. You're going to get offended. Yeah. When you talk, you're going to offend people. It's going to happen. But a safe space, meaning somebody's not going to judge you for what you say. You know, somebody's going to look at what you're saying, you know, with love um, and understanding. And that's really important because everybody wants to be right right now and everybody wants to talk, but nobody's listening. That's what I feel like is happening right now. That is the biggest, um, the biggest skill I think uh, that I work on daily, actually. What listening? Listening, listening. Um, I know that I talk and I teach it, and this me being very raw, naked is because I need to keep learning it, right? I I teach what I want to hear and what I want to keep learning because I'm in this every day. And sometimes in that process, I forget to listen. Mm. So probably one of the reasons I started doing these interviews is because maybe I was tired of my own voice, but <laughs> I just wanted to <laughs> wanted to listen to other people's naked journey. And I wanted to learn. And I, it's been such a blessing, I will tell you. I don't know. I think I've interviewed like 25 or 30 people by now. And you don't even realize you're developing a new skill, like just oh, yeah. in your interview process. Like I'm sure your first one was was yeah. probably not that good, and it's getting better. <laughs> and I just love it, Jeff. And I've learned so much from people, and I've gotten a whole different light on 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 things. It's just it's always like right now I'm I'm learning. Probably that's why I light up because I ask people about their passion, and with their light lights me up. And I'm like, this is why I do this in my lunch hour. This is why I do this on my day out. This is why I do this even though I don't get paid. Just because it's just so beautiful to see other people light up. And that is my whole purpose, is sparking the light in others. So interviewing is, goes right hand in hand with my purpose. I just wish I got paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, I mean, you, you might be without even realizing it. Um, you know, th you're... I mean, payment, obviously, you would agree with this. It doesn't always have to be money, um, you know, but, you know, it's, you know, talking about the skill that you're building, because I tell people because people are like, why did you get into film? And I can never really answer it. Like, I've always been into media. I got into that early. But again, back to the struggle is your gift um, in my family. I'm 
the youngest, like when you count cousins, like for the longest time, I was the youngest of like 20, 30 cousins, you know, then, then throw in aunts and uncles. So in my family, holiday time, performance was a big deal. So like if you were practicing an instrument, like at Christmas, you were going to play violin and then the other cousin was going to play the piano and then somebody was going to sing. And then sometimes they did magic shows. But I'm saying this because I was the youngest. So a lot of times I wasn't involved in that process. So as a six year old, I'm watching my older cousins perform and all this feeling left out at the moment. Why don't I get to do this? I can't wait to grow up. But what what my family did was also basically like give me the camera. So from early on, you know, I was filming and I was observing. So little did I know that I so I thought that that was I thought that I was like getting screwed over in the moment, little did I know I was actually building a tool set that was going to allow me to build a career later in life. So you, that's what I'm saying with you. You just never know exactly like what yeah. that's leading to. You never know. Like, so the struggle is the gift that that struggle, that, that feeling left out was one of the most important things that happened to me. Isn't it? Challenge is the sauce. There it is. I mean, I, I love it because obviously I put myself in this situation and I know there's plenty of gifts. You know how many people I've met, how many people I, I, it's, it's expanding and people are contacting me to be interviewed, which is like, oh, well, me? Okay. Uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's been so beautiful. So probably I'll keep doing it because just I get, I am getting paid. <laughs> no, so you, much you, you need to keep on doing this. You really you like you do. You need to and it's and as much as you've been I think you sometimes you're doing like three times a week. Yeah. Keep doing that. For yeah. sure. I don't know what it's gonna lead to, but it'll lead to something. Yeah, and I again I enjoy it. You know, I guess if at some point I, I hate it, <laughs> probably it's not gonna work and I'm not gonna be dynamic with my guests. And so it's not gonna work. But this is this is so great. So for people, because we've been doing this for an hour, because I could talk to you for like a hundred hours. An hour already? Wow. It's been an hour. But for the people that don't know what where can they find you for your many, many talents, can you please tell them a little bit about you, what you do besides being awesome, and where they can find you. You know what I love how you're doing my intro at the end? Uh <laughs> <laughs> Because, <laughs> by the way, my name is Jeffrey Cavelli, <laughs> uh, New York-based filmmaker, comedian, podcaster, health coach, motivational speaker for kids. Uh, Good For You Productions is the name of my film company. Um, comedy shows, you're just going to have to follow me. The website is itisgoodforyou.com. Just Google Good For You Productions and Jeffrey Cavelli, and you know how Google works. It'll find everything about me, even some stuff that I may not like. So, yeah, look it up. <laughs> and uh, reach out about anything, I guess. I, I love it, and I'm sorry I didn't introduce you. I usually do it at the beginning. This conversation started so different than what I'm used to, uh, which that's probably nice. there's a blessing to that. I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, I'm so happy to congratulations on your engagement. Thank you. I want to see you. I want to see you live on a comedy show. Please send me the dates. Maybe I can fly up and see you. I know I'm going to be in set, oh, the first weekend in October in New York for a seminar. I think I'm speaking at a seminar I'm gonna, again. I'm going to book a show just for you. <clears throat> Would you? Yes, please. I want to I wanna go. I do want to go. I've been saying this for a while. And uh, I, can, I can't wait to meet your girl, which I want to meet. Yes, and, and I'm very excited about everything. And yes, if you need any videos, anything... You are the man. You are such a storyteller. I wish I can. I, I'm gonna just send me your budget and send me how much it's gonna cost me. Maybe I have a house in the keys. Maybe you can come with your girlfriend, stay at the house in the keys, and then we'll make a video. How about that? I feel like you're trying to negotiate with me and already talking me down, and we'll talk <laughs> for sure. I just wanted to put it live, put it out there. You know, <laughs> okay. it's okay. Something sticks eventually. Uh, this has been fun, you guys. You can uh, both find us on um, Facebook and other media. Just like you said, it's Good For You Production. And it is indeed good for you. Please sign up for um, Rate My Show and subscribe to my Get Naked podcast. And it's been a pleasure. You have yourself a lovely Thursday. And if you are in town and speak Spanish, I'm having my Get Naked experience in Spanish this upcoming Saturday, April 27th, in my office, 12 to 6. Uh, awesome. I think two spots left, but uh, it's going to be exciting. It's my first time in Spanish. Can you believe it? My no. first time. Why? 
It's like Spanish is my first language. It's yeah. almost like not, right? <laughs> this was so fun. Please like, share, comment, uh, let us know what you thought. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. It was longer than usual, but I could speak to this guest for a long, long time. I love and appreciate you, and I'm so happy to see you happy. So thank you, everybody. Have yourself a lovely day. Thanks for having Ciao. me. Ciao.